So hyperparathyroidism is characterized by increased production of parathyroid uh, hormone by the parathyroid glands. Now there are two things. One is the primary hyperparathyroidism and the secondary hyperparathyroidism. In primary hyperparathyroidism, there is an autonomous production of parathyroid hormone and this will be because of the adenoma and adenoma is the most common cause of hyper primary hyperparathyroidism. It constitutes up to 90% of the cases of hyper uh, primary hyperparathyroidism. Then comes the hyperplasia. It can be uh, one, uh, one gland hyperplasia or multiple gland hyperplasia. So the hyperplasia of the parathyroid glands is the second most common cause of the primary hyperparathyroidism. The, the least common or the rare cause includes the parathyroid cancer as well. Now the secondary causes of hyperparathyroidism includes anything which causes reduction in the calcium level in the blood. Now the vitamin D deficiency or decreased intake of the dietary calcium is one of the causes and the chronic renal failure will prevent the activation of the vitamin D because of which again there will be hyperparathyroidism because uh, the chronic renal failure reduces the vitamin D which reduces the calcium level in the blood. Now the most important manifestation of hyperparathyroidism is in the hand. So all the manifestation of the hyperparathyroidism we predominantly see in the hand. Now how exactly the calcium and phosphate is absorbed and how is it regulated in the blood? Normally the calcium and phosphate is absorbed from the intestine with the help of the calciferol or the, the calcitriol or the vitamin D. Now once this is absorbed this calcium and phosphate goes all over the circulation and it will start supplying the, the bones and helps in the formation of the bone. Now this step will be usually inhibited by the parathyroid hormone thus helping the calcium and phosphate to retain in the blood. The other than this what parathyroid hormone does is along with vitamin D parathyroid and vitamin D will cause increase in the activity of osteoclasts and thus causing the resorption of the bone and causing the calcium and phosphate to enter into the blood. Now this step is usually inhibited by the hormone which has exactly opposite action as that of the parathyroid hormone that is the calcitonin. Now the calcitonin will help in the bone formation, it will prevent the bone resorption. That's why it is it uh, inhibits the activity of the osteoclast whereas parathyroid and vitamin D was responsible for the formation of the, the for the uh, travel of the calcium and phosphate from the bone to the blood. Now calcium uh, is normally excreted in the glomerulus, in the glomerulus it is excreted into the kidney and in the distal convoluted tubule it is getting absorbed back into the uh, blood with the help of vitamin D as well as in the parathyroid hormone. So phosphate will be normally excreted into the kidney by the glomerulus and now this phosphate uh, will be absorbed into the, the blood in the proximal convoluted tubule with the help of vitamin D but this will be prevented by the parathyroid hormone. So what did we see? The calcium is absorbed by both vitamin D as well as parathyroid whereas in the reabsorption of the phosphate is only by the vitamin D and not by the parathyroid hormone. So because of this the level of the calcium, the calcium in the blood will be higher in case of vitamin D as well as parathyroid whereas the level of the phosphate will be high in case of vitamin D and the low in case of the parathyroid hormone. In other way if I have to tell in the uh, in the body the cal calcium and phosphate is absorbed into the circulation in the presence of vitamin D and once this is absorbed this will go into the bone and which is prevented by the parathyroid now this will be absorbed back into the blood with the help of parathyroid and vitamin D which is inhibited by the calcitonin but in the presence of vitamin D we have absorption of the calcium from the kidney whereas in the presence of the parath parathyroid hormone there is absorption of only calcium into the circulation so overall net effect calcium and phosphate retention increase in the calcium and phosphate in the blood and whereas increase in the calcium with the decrease in the calcium in the blood by the parathyroid hormone. So these are the changes that we see 
this is the this is the mechanism by which the calcium and the phosphate absorption happens. So the same thing is depicted here from the intestine. The with the help of vitamin D, the calcium and phosphate is absorbed, which is deposited in the bone, which is prevented by the parathyroid hormone. Now this bone will undergo uh, the with the help of osteoclastic activity will be resorption. That is all the calcium and phosphate absorbed back in the blood with the help of parathyroid and the vitamin D. Whereas calcitonin will prevent the uh, resorption of the bone. Now all the calcium and phosphate will be excreted through the kidney, but this will be absorbed back uh, into the blood. In the with the, uh, the calcium is absorbed with the help of both parathyroid as well as vitamin D. Whereas the phosphate is absorbed only with the help of the calcitriol. Even the fibroblastic growth factor will inhibit the phosphate absorption. So the net, net effect will be increase in the calcium, decrease in the phosphate and by the parathyroid and increase in the calcium and increase in the phosphate by the help of calcitriol. So this is how the mechanism of the parathyroid and the calcitriol happen. Now, if there is hyperparathyroidism, then we have to see that in the hyperparathyroidism, there is increase in the resorption of the bone. So there is increase in the resorption of the bone in the help with the help of if there is excess of parathyroid hormone and this is what will be the manifestation of the hyperparathyroidism so what do you see in hyperparathyroidism so we have epiphysis with the with the trabecular bone here and we have a cortical bone here uh, which is the the metaphysis and diaphysis made up of the cortical bone we have ligaments here we have muscles here attaching to the bone now what exactly happens the first thing that can happen is the subchondral resorption the resorption that is the loss the bone will get resolved because there is parathyroid is causing the bone resorption the one pattern is a subchondral resorption that there will be cartilage here under the cartilage the bone resorption is called subchondral resorption it will be mainly happening in the joint then we will have sub ligamentous resorption under the ligament attachment sub uh, tendinous resorption under the attachment of the tendons and then we will have the trabecular resorption the trabecular bone undergoes resorption where we will see smudging of the trabecular bone then there will be intracortical resorption because of which we will see tunneling of the cortex we will see one black line within the cortex that is called as a tunneling of the cortex seen within the cortex and endosteal resorption can happen or subperiosteal resorption. So this is an example of subperiosteal resorption where we can see that the bone is eroded under the periosteum with a small line of the periosteum over it, one thin white line over the uh, the resorbed bone and then there can be endosteal resorption which will lead to thinning of the cortical bone. So these are all the different types of resorption that can happen in the hyperparathyroid other than this there can be a large lytic lesions which, which might be happening in the bone which might have some amount of soft tissue component within is called, classically called as a brown tumor which is a feature of hyperparathyroidism can be seen in renal osteodystrophy also in which there is kidney failure has led to increase in the parathyroid hormone production now this is an example of a hyperparathyroidism in which we can see some fractures have happened because there is increased bone resorption, bone has become weak and classical subperiosteal resorption. We can see some blurring on this aspect of the bone. So there is some amount of the blurring. Now again this happens classically in the radial aspect. Radial aspect of the phalanges are the common site of the resorption. It mainly involves the middle phalanx and of the index finger is the most commonly involved finger and this pattern is called as the lace like pattern of resorption in the radial aspect of the middle phalanx mainly seen in the index finger and also some resorption we can see in, at the tip of the, the distal phalangeal tuft and that is what is called as the acroosteolysis. So, subperiosteal re resorption, acroosteolysis, and fractures might be present in the hyperparathyroidism. Now, this is what is what is the type of resorption that we see in the skull. This is classically called as salt and pepper type of appearance because we can see some dotted areas. They are nothing but the trabecular area of the bone. Then we have the blackened area. They are nothing but the uh, the the 
resorbed that is uncalcified osteoid which is appearing the black so the black representing the pepper and the white representing the salt what we call it as classically salt and pepper type of appearance in this again we can see this resorption subperiosteal resorption we can see in the radial aspect of so this is a thumb so this is a radial aspect of the <coughs> the index finger and also in this image you can see that there is a tunnel which is formed and outside that there is a bone and inside that there is a bone so there is a, a cortical tunneling which is a, a example of intracortical resorption in this image again we can see subchondral resorption this is a joint in the uh, uh, in the sacroiliac joint it has two components one is the ligamentous joint one is the the synovial joint the anterior inferior aspect of the sacroiliac joint is formed by the synovial joint so in this synovial joint we can see that some amount of resorption here and here bilaterally some resorptions are seen in the uh, the synovial part of the sacroiliac joint sub control resorption uh, here we can see subtendinous resorption this is the area of the attachment of the adductor origin and the area of attachment of the hamstring origin in ischial fibrosity and uh, ischiopubic rami we can see some resorptions in this image now in this image again we can see in the acromioclavicular joint subchondral resorption some lucency we can see at the tip of the clavicle as well as at the attachment of uh, the coracoclavicular ligament we can see some resorption at the sub ligamentous resorption now this is uh, what we call as the brown's tumor we can see some soft tissue component kind of lesion with the, with excision with the some soft tissue component and the lytic lesion of the bone and in the same patient when you do a technetium 99m system based scan in this nuclear scan we can see increased uptake in the uh, in the area of thyroid and parathyroid area the system we scan uh, suggests that it is a parathyroid adenoma so these are the imaging features in a patient with hyperparathyroidism with some physiology of calcium and phosphate metabolism